I'd buy this for a dollar. So in an effort to save money on this project, I am using a lot larger size lumber and we're gonna be ripping everything to size at the table saw and chopping the length of the chop saw. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with this 10 second cutting everything up montage, but I will remind you that if you wanna build this project or any of my other projects, I do offer a free set of plans on my website, diybuilds.ca. Let's get cutting. And that concludes our session of turning big wood into small wood. We're left with a stack of rail pieces here. We've got the roof pieces as well as our four corner posts. And then over there we have two different sizes of ballisters. Those will be longer on the outside and the back and then shorter on the front. Now I want to move on to adding the ballisters to the rail pieces. And to do that, we're going to use a very specialized tool. Ta-da! Here it is. And for you unaware of what this is, this is called a hollow chisel mortising machine. Now what it is, is basically an auger bit inside of a hollow chisel, which cuts squares. So we're gonna use this square cutting ability to cut a bunch of rectangles, making a bunch of passes. And then we're gonna be sticking our ballisters inside of it, just like that. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the client really wants these rectangular shaped ballisters. If you were gonna use just round dowels or something, you could just drill a circle and be done with it. Now I can already see a few of you typing in the comments as I speak, Brad, I can't afford a hollow chisel mortising machine. I don't even know where to get one. What are my other options here? I'll tell you to accomplish the same thing. You can use a dowling jig. That'll be the cheapest option for sure, but it will be kind of tricky to pull off and line everything up. A better option would be to use something like a Festool Domino, a floating tenon of sorts. But unfortunately, those machines cost about four times as much as this hollow chisel mortising machine, which I got from Beaver for about $300. Now I do feel like using the hollow chisel mortise and using this kind of mortise and tenon joinery is going to be the strongest for us. So right here I have clamped together the four rail pieces for the sides. These are the shorter pieces. And now I'm gonna mark out where the mortises go. I'm gonna be marking with my dimensions here on my plans, the left side of each mortise. And then I'll just lay on top a baluster and mark the other side. And now I'll set up the mortising machine here. I'm gonna set up a little bit of dust collection cause it will get out of control real fast and we'll start just hammering these out. So now that five million mortises are cut into our rails, we can go ahead and start sanding everything. We wanna sand everything now as if it's all assembled, it's gonna be a lot more work then. And the reason it's gonna be a lot more work then and not now is I have all these pieces grouped together that are the same size. So when I'm using the sander, I can just glide over all the same size pieces without doing each individual piece, rotate them all at the same time. This will make everything a lot easier and faster. And there we have it, seven hours of sanding and 20 sanding discs later, we are finally to the point where we can start assembly. Now I'm gonna begin assembly by putting together the four sets of rails and ballisters. Now everything should just slide into these mortises we created and pretty much be self-aligning. We do wanna make sure as we put things in clamps to dry up, because I am going to be adding glue to these, that the edges stay nice and square. That'll make everything easier going forward.
Okay, our next step is going to be taking this piece right here, which is going to be the entrance or the opening to the bed itself. And the reason for this piece is to connect this top rail to the middle rail to the bottom rail, which is going to be right here as well. Otherwise, everything would be pretty floppy. This is really going to add a lot of strength. And the way we're going to do that is lay it on top and we're going to mark the back side of it and we're going to cut half lap joints or big dados for all these three joints right here. And just like that, we've got some pretty nice looking rabbits and a dado in the middle. Now the trick to cutting these is to use a dado stack with flat teeth, or in my instance, just a flat tooth blade and making a whole bunch of cuts. Now we're gonna get this glued up using my square here to make sure that these are aligned. All right, on to attaching our vertical post to our back railing section. Now, the way I'm going to make all these connections is going to be with dowels. I'm going to be using this long dowel rod. We're going to chop this up into little sections, chamfer the edges, and that'll be our connector pins, kind of like a loose tenon, but you know, a dowel. Anyways, what I have here is a self-centering doweling jig. We're going to drill three holes into the end of all of these, and then I'm going to use these little center finder pin deals right here, and we're going to put these into the holes we drill push them up against our vertical post piece, and that'll show us exactly where to drill the matching hole in the post. Then we'll just slap glue on the dowels and put it all together. So now that we have the holes on this side of things, we need holes in the post. And to do that, I have center finders in these two holes. Ideally, you would own six of these center finders, but I own two, so we're gonna have to do this in stages. Now, we're gonna just push this up against here with the bottom lined up, and I have some spacers here and here to prop this off the table, as I do want these rails centered on the post. And there you have our three little points right here. That's where we're going to use a 3 8 inch brad point bit to drill these out, as these are 3 8 inch dowels. So if you have a drill press, this is the way you want to do it. It's going to keep the bit nice and straight up and down, and it also allows me to set a depth stop. we can go ahead and work on mounting these roof pieces here, which we're gonna do again with some 3 8 inch dowels in the corners here. So I'll use my jig to center it somewhere over here so it doesn't blow out the other side. We'll put our center finding piece on, press it in here, drill the corresponding hole in this side, and then it's gonna be onto the fun part where we actually have to crisscross the middle section here and we'll do a half lap joint on the table saw. So you see I've got dry fitted right now the two top pieces onto the whole side section here and I've got them crisscrossed in the middle. This is the aesthetic we're going for. So I've taken my combination square here, set it at two and seven eighths and then put a mark here with pencil on the other side and we'll get that all aligned. Then we can just scribe a line on either side and we know where to make our half lap joints. So as you can see, we're getting ready for our kind of unorthodox glue up. I don't really have the biggest assembly table in the world, so this is what we gotta do. Now because of this, my table saw not being totally coplanar with the outfeed table, I did have to add a shim on the far side and over there in that corner. And then I look down each one of the sides to just make sure there's no warp or twist. 
So now we can go ahead and pop everything off, get glue in those two joints and in the half lap joint, put some weight on it, some clamps in the corner, and we're on to the next step. So now that we have the front and back assembly fully made and our side assemblies, time to attach everything together. And the way I want to do this is with knockdown joinery, because this is going to be way too huge if we leave it all assembled to get it through any door, let alone in a car or a truck. So the way I'm going to do that is I have the three holes in all the ends of the pieces that go between the front and back. The two outside holes are going to have shallow dowels, which will be glued on one end and free on the other. That's just for alignment. The hole in the middle is going to be for a threaded insert. And then we have something called a connector bolt, which I'll show you in a second, which is going to be a through hole to the other side using an Allen key to tighten everything down. That way we can assemble it and disassemble this as much as we want. So the first step I have here is we've got our three center finding pins on either side. Yes, I did have to go out and buy more of these. And we're just going to line them up with our marks here. I have a center mark at the top and bottom, push them into place, and we'll drill our three holes, the two bigger ones for the dowels on the outside and a smaller one in the middle for our connector bolt. So I've marked both sides of this with B and A, along with the corresponding rail side, A and B, so we can perfectly line this up. Even though all the holes should be the same, they might be a little bit off, so we'll just keep everything together in pairs. So everything we need to do to the front and back assembly, the two dowel holes and the through hole, that's everything on that end of things. Now as for all these connector pieces that go between them, we now need to first step remove all of our center finding pins. Now that those are removed, I can show you the hardware we're going to use. This is called a threaded insert. It has a big coarse thread on the outside to bite into the wood and a fine thread on the inside for a bolt. This is called a connector bolt. It has a nice huge head with an Allen key. Looks really good from the outside and it's not going to dig into the wood every time you build this piece and knock it down. So what we need to do is install this threaded insert into this hole in the middle. Now unfortunately this threaded insert has a bit of a flange around it so first thing we need to do is set up our doweling jig again with the half inch setting. I have a half inch Forstner bit set up in my drill and just carve out a, about a millimeter or two deep lip. That way this can sit flush otherwise it's going to protrude and there's going to be a gap where it's connected. Again here's that threaded insert. You see the little lip that we've made room for up here. And what I've done is I've taken the Allen key that came with all these threaded inserts and I've cut the end off, put it in my drill, and we're just going to simply screw this into place. And there we go. There's our threaded insert. Next, we'll take these dowels and glue them into this end only, and only a little bit of dowel should be sticking up to register the position of things. Perfect. Now we just do that a million more times. The last thing I need to do before spraying all this with our clear coat is just break all the edges with 240 grit sanding blocks because we don't want any babies getting cut on these sharp edges. We'll blow everything off and start spraying. I like it.